Hello class. In our last video, <clears throat> I introduced the concept of what a base peak is. And a base peak is the peak in the mass spectrum that is that has the highest relative abundance. So that would be our base peak. And then we then I talked about the molecular ion peak, which is the mass of our molecule. So we our molecule we injected on the mass spec is hexane, and hexane has a mass of 86. But it has an m over z of 86 because it's going to weigh 86 atomic mass units, but it's going to have a charge of plus 1. So let's delve in a little bit deeper into base peaks and molecular ion peaks and look at a few other examples. So here is a mass spectrum of benzene. Now for benzene, what we have here is the base peak because it is the largest peak. So that is our base peak. But in this case, it is also our molecular ion peak. It is one in one of the same. Now this does not always happen. More often than not, it doesn't happen. The moral of the story, you cannot assume that the largest peak is the molecular ion peak. But in benzene's example here, it is. So if we look at pentane right here, we can clearly identify right from the start that this right here is going to be our base peak because it's the largest. Okay. But it is not the molecular ion peak. The molecular ion peak is that one right there. So don't make that mistake. Now we're going to delve into it, the material further to figure out which is the molecular ion peak. But I'm just showing you the difference here. You can't claim the biggest peak is the molecular ion peak. The biggest peak will always be the base peak. Okay. Now this little one right there, we will talk about that later. Okay, that's a very important peak called the M plus. Let's do it right here. Goodness. That is the M plus one peak is what we call it. And we will have a, a big discussion or a thorough discussion about that later. Okay. I want to focus a little bit more time on this concept of the ionization process, the process in which the molecule is zapped with high energy electrons to rip off an, of an electron. And I want to demonstrate that on the whiteboard. Okay. So if we have just a generic alkane here, okay, and we zap it with high electron or high energy electrons, what's going to happen to that molecule? Well, it's going to rip off one electron. Okay. Now, what we have here, I'm going to put in brackets because that is now a positively charged species. Now, what has happened? It has ripped off an electron. So we're going to say, hey, the one electron is over here. So what... Let's clarify this. This guy over here is a beam of electrons. And that beam of electrons is going to rip off one electron from the molecule. And which, if we simplify this here, do you see this bond there? That is represented by two electrons, right? That two electrons shows us a sigma bond. Now the beam of electrons here is going to rip off one of those electrons. So now we only have one. And now that is positively charged. And only positively charged species can reach the detector on the mass spectrum. 
And this right here would be the molecular ion peak. Or the molecular ion, which we represent with the M+. Plus. Now, once the molecular ion is formed, it can reach the detector. But more often than not, that molecular ion peak is going to fragment. So I'm going to take a copy of this. What's interesting is that this compound can now fragment into smaller pieces. And the reason why it's going to fragment is because this molecular ion is a cation. It's missing an electron. It's very, very unstable. So it's going to break apart. Now before we talk about things breaking apart, let's just review quickly the different types of arrows that we have seen in organic chemistry. So let's say if we have a molecule that looks like this. And I draw an arrow like, and then we have three lone pairs here. We can draw the arrow like this. And we call that a double headed arrow. And what that's showing us is it's going to give us species that look like this. So now we have a cation and then the bromine just turned into a bromide now has a negative charge. So a double headed arrow, what is it showing us? That double headed arrow is showing us that the two electrons in that bond, carbon bromine bond, are both of them going right there. Now we could take that same molecule and do what's called a fish hook arrow. And a fish hook arrow looks like this. It only has one hook. Okay, now if we did that, what happens? Well, let's draw it like that. So I drew two fish hook arrows. What we get now is that one electron is going to go to the carbon. Let's draw in the lone pairs here. And one electron is going to go to the bromine. So double headed arrows means two electrons are going. Fish hooked arrows means only one electron is moving. Okay, so now let's take a look, go back to our molecular ion here. What can happen is that the molecule is going to fragment, and it could fragment like this. So when it fragments like that, as drawn, what, it, what are we going to have? Well, we're going to have one of the carbon species look like that, and then the other carbon species is going to look like that. Now, the species on the left is called a radical. And radicals are species that have one electron. And then this species right here, you will see that it, when you calculate the formal charge, is going to be positively charged. And so that is our cation. And so these are our fragments. But of these two fragments, only this one is going to reach the detector because it's positively charged. The radical does not hit the detector because it's not charged. So it just, we don't see it. The detector cannot detect it. 
Okay. Now, if we come here, this image right here, this is hexane. Okay. And the way this is represent, what this is representing is that the hexane molecule has already gone through the high energy beam of electrons. So it is knocked off an electron. Now what's interesting about this picture is the way this book that shows that isn't the best way to look at it. So what we can do is I'm going to take this molecule right here or this molecular ion and I'm going to redraw it. Okay. I'm going to redraw it here on the whiteboard. I'm going to draw it like this. One, two, three, four. Okay. So is that six carbons? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I want six carbons. So when we take this molecule and put it through the high energy electron beam, we're going to knock off an electron. So we could pick, select this bond right here. So that bond is now going to look like that. See that? Now there's going to be many molecules in the mass spec. There's not just going to be one hexane, but there's going to be multiple. So what I want to do is kind of go back here, not letting me do the undo function for some reason. I, I want to take this molecule and make some copies of it. Right. And one more, just in case. So there's millions and millions of molecules that are getting shot into the mass spec, and we could have one of the hexane molecules lose an electron there. So now that's positively charged, and that other electron just went away. Okay. Now, what's interesting is now we have a cation here, okay. and so that species right there, will be our molecular ion peak. But that molecular ion peak is now going to fragment. And what it can do is it can fragment like this. It could put, let's see, it could put the one electron there. So what does that make our compound look like now? When it fragments, it's going to be CH3 CH2 1, 2, 3, 4 and a CH2 and plus this little piece right there Now let's make sure we're tracking where the electrons are going. According to the blue arrow here, let's draw a better fish hook arrow. It is going to that methyl carbon. So right there. Let's... So if the electron went there, that means this carbon right there is going to be positively charged. Now, we can represent that like this, put it by putting it into brackets. Positively charged like that. Because look, this carbon right here only has three bonds, hence it will be positively charged. And that right there is a fragment. Now you could do this all over again. Let's look at a second uh, hexane molecule. The electron that's going to be ripped off doesn't always have to be the one on the very end. It could be on the internal. It could be this right there in the middle. It could be that guy. And so that can be, there's our carbocation. 
And then this can fragment. It could fragment like this. So now what will our two pieces be? Well, we will have our CH3. CH2, those twos are a little bad looking. Right. And plus we will have our ethyl. But where did that electron go? It went to the ethyl group, so it's right there. And then this carbon right here is going to be positively charged because there's only three bonds to this carbon right there. So we could represent that fragment like that. So that's another fragment. So we could keep going on. We could keep looking at a third molecule. What if we took one of the electrons from right there? We'll get a different fragment and so on and so forth. So this table right here or sorry, this slide right here shows us those fragments. Okay. So what's interesting to note, okay, look at this. This is the molecular ion peak. And this is one of the fragments. So this fragment shown in blue right here is the same thing that I drew right here. Okay, so this, we could say, hey, that right there is our blue fragment. Now, when you compare the size of the fragment, you see it's 71 compared to the molecular ion peak. What is the difference between those two? Well, it's a difference of 15. Why is it 15 mass units smaller? Well, because it lost 15 atomic mass units from the methyl species. So if you ever see a, f a fragment that's 15 atomic mass units smaller than the molecular ion peak, then you have a good idea that a methyl group has been ripped off. Okay. So now let's put this all together. Okay. So here is a mass spectrum of hexane. There's our molecular ion peak. Remember the blue fragment right there? Where is it? Right there, 71. So that peak right there is because of that blue fragment. Then if we go and say, hey, we ripped off an ethyl group. So this piece is going to be 57 and we see, well, 57 m over z and in this particular example that is our base peak and then if you rip off three carbons you have a fragment that's a m over z of 43 which you can see on the mass spectrum so all these peaks right here we can figure out what they are based off of understanding fragmentation patterns now, am I going to require you to analyze every single peak in this mass spectrum and tell me what fragment it is? No. But you should be very well aware of some very common fragmentation patterns. So the first three that I've shown you, losing a methyl, an ethyl, or a propyl. Those are some common ones. And in the upcoming videos, we will look at other different types of fragmentation patterns. For example, how do alcohols fragment? What about alkenes and different functional groups? So we will look at those in other videos.